How's it going guys? Lin here back with another architecture video. Today we are talking about alternative programs for architecture. <sighs> this is going to be awesome. Okay, so in this video, we are going to tackle the various programs that I never knew I needed until I actually needed them, if that makes any sense. So there are a ton of videos online about architectural programs and most of them are pretty obvious like AutoCAD, Revit, SketchUp, V-Ray, and ARCHICAD, and all those other stuff. Now all of those softwares are archetypes of the popular genres of architectural softwares. Those genres being Beam softwares, 3D modeling softwares, 2D or drafting softwares, rendering softwares, and post-production softwares. So the programs we're about to talk about don't exactly belong to those genres of software, but instead fit somewhere in the middle. They're kind of like secret softwares that a secret association out there is trying to keep secret from us architects and architecture students. <laughs> With this plans, they'll never discover these secret softwares. <laughs> <coughs> oh, boss, someone told them our secrets. What? No! First program is a PDF editor. So as an architect, I always find myself handling PDFs on a daily basis. Yeah, you do. What? Uh, nothing. Okay. Anyways, as I was saying, PDFs are an essential file type in an architect's arsenal. I often export 2D CAD drawings as PDFs and usually I have to export like 30 PDFs. So those 30 PDFs I have to print one by one. So a great workaround or trick to make your life easier is to combine all of those 30 PDFs with a PDF editor. So a good PDF editor that I have discovered is PDF Element Pro by Wondershare. The feature I love the most about this program is that you could combine multiple PDFs so that you can print it super easily. No more opening many PDFs than getting confused which PDF you have already queued up for printing and then accidentally printing too many of one page or like missing to print a page or two. With this software, you could also edit images by clipping it, rotating it, and mirroring it, and you can even edit and add texts. This is very useful for students who are doing research because you can import scanned PDFs and edit or copy paste the text. So usually when you scan a book into a PDF, you really can't copy the text because that PDF is basically like a flat bitmap image. But with this program, it has Optical Character Recognition or OCR, which basically means that PDF Element Pro will detect text characters and convert them into a copy-pastable text file that you could copy from the scanned PDF into your Word file. It's always a bummer when you find a reference material for your thesis or your research work that is a PDF file but you couldn't copy the text directly. So you result to either manually typing what is written on the PDF word per word or just inserting the PDF into your thesis manuscript like a, like a freaking barbarian. <laughs> Anyway, PDF Element Pro also allows you to convert your PDF files into many file types. My favorite file types being PowerPoint and EPUB files so you can read it with your EPUB reader. So if it's not yet obvious, today's video is sponsored by PDF Element Pro. Check the links in the description for a free trial and free download links for Android and iOS. You could also buy the Pro version with a 40% discount if you click on the link below. One difference between the Pro version and the free version is that the Pro version has optical character recognition and the free trial does not. The next program that we are going to discuss is a desktop publishing or page layout software. Basically, this is a software that you can use when creating your presentation boards or when you will create your portfolio. This software is also useful for creating posters, magazines, and creative thesis manuscripts. A good example of a publishing software is Adobe InDesign. But Leon, I can do my layouts in Photoshop. Yeah, you could, but Adobe InDesign makes your workflow so much easier and faster compared to when you're using Photoshop. Because in InDesign, you could create templates which basically allows all the pages of your layouts to stay consistent. With this, you could create books or magazines with automatic page numberings. One feature I love about InDesign is that you have a master page so if you want to change the layout of all your pages instead of changing each page's layout like you would if you used photoshop you could just edit the master page and all other pages linked to the master page will change accordingly software number three project management software so project management software is pretty self-explanatory 
it helps you manage your projects. So if you're a big time architect like me, you're not a big time architect. Nope, I'm not, but let's just say I am. Okay. So if you're a big time architect and you have lots of projects, this software is essential. A good example of a project management software is Primavera. With Primavera, you could balance resource capacity, plan schedule and control complex projects and all those things that's written on their website. Actually, I just I just memorized all of those things from their website. <laughs> okay, so me personally, I don't use these softwares because I don't have that much projects. <laughs> But I mentioned it here in this video because you guys might someday need this software. On to the next software. The fourth software on our list is a digital sculpting software. A digital sculpting software is very useful for creating weird non-linear shapes and biomorphic forms that are very hard to generate with normal architectural 3D softwares. Great examples of these softwares are Blender and ZBrush. But we will focus on ZBrush because its name sounds like a striped horse creature thingy. With ZBrush, you could create models just like you are sculpting from clay. Many people use ZBrush to create 3D generated characters like Woody, Buzz Lightyear, and even Master Chief. But you could also use ZBrush to create whimsical architectural pieces that would be hard to create on a normal 3D software. Last but not the least is the video editing software. You might be wondering why would architects need to know about video editing softwares? In our day and age, visual media is a very prominent part of our culture. You're actually consuming visual media right now by watching this YouTube video. So in architecture, we are all about them visuals. That did not make sense. Anywho, in order to up your presentation game, you guys need to be able to create great videos. And to do so, you need good video editing software. The softwares that I use are Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. But I mostly use Premiere Pro. So the difference between these two softwares is that Premiere Pro is used more for simple editing tasks like cutting and arranging the clips then adding music, sound, and all those other stuff with the video. Also, Premiere Pro's timeline is better than After Effects. For trimming and moving video clips, it's a little bit easier when you're using Premiere Pro. On the other hand, After Effects is used to add special effects like adding floaty texts into your video like this or making explosions and gunshots, you know, all those cool stuff. So these softwares are useful when you are presenting to a client or a jury and you need to show them a walkthrough or a flythrough of the project or if you want to create a visually stunning video portfolio of your existing projects. So I guess that's my top 5 alternative programs for architecture. If you guys think I missed any secret software that are very useful in the architecture field, leave it in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on my next video. Flying peace!